Well, hey, everybody, I'm glad you're back. Oh, my footage is slowing down here. I feel like Captain Spock. Anyway, Captain Spock. I mean, Captain Kirk. Anyway, so let me get a cup of coffee here. And we'll talk about why I'm making this video. Hang on, let me take a little sip. Tasty. So anyway, car versus, now when I say e-bikes versus cars, I still like my cars. I still like my motorcycle. And this is not to diss cars. I still love, I love cars. And I think, uh, you know what? You don't have to be an environmentalist. You don't have to be a fitness freak. You can just be a regular person that, like me, if you're an adult, it just wants to get outside, enjoy the weather, and do it cheap. Now, you might say, well, cerebral policy, you, you paid a lot of money for these bikes, and even the cheapest ones, I think, I mean, unless you go and get one from Walmart, but usually a good cheap one's about... Seventeen hundred dollars, but like you, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get one of them uh, electric, an electric bike company, bike, and uh, you know it starts off at seventeen hundred, but once we put on the fenders and the lights and the gears on it, I think out the door, it's gonna be about. Twenty five hundred dollars. That's a lot of money for for just a bicycle. And when I first saw this the Stromer, I wasn't. I didn't even know anything about a Stromer. That's another thing about really. It's cool about e bikes over cars. There are a lot of e bikes that look alike, like damn near the same damn bike as that bike and I have suspicion that they are the dang the same dang bike they're just a company that puts their name on it but and they'll put like well we put different brakes and, and another thing that gets me going but we'll talk about later is this supply shortage thing not that I don't believe it because I do just like I, I believe in the COVID I believe there's a cove, or coof, sorry, the coof. I believe it. But it, you have to be, you have to wonder. Because if it's like, oh, hurry up and buy this bike. Hurry up. The supply chains are, it's short, you know. It might take you for a while to get another one bike. And then the next thing you know, the same guy is saying, telling you this. It's girl or guy telling you, reviewing the bike. Well, what happens? Next thing you know, they're having these supply chains, but then they come out with a new bike. And you're like, oh, 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 shouldn't you worry about your supply chain on your old models? They're, they're not even a year old. Maybe you should worry about that before you come out with a newer bike. Because if you're having supply chains with that, the model of your bikes, well, why the heck would you think I would want to buy your newer one? And, you know, I haven't really heard that with Electric Bike Company. I haven't heard that with Stromer, you know. Uh, but oh, I, I don't even know about Gazelle. I don't think it was mentioned to me. But these other ones, like, oh, yeah. And I'm just like, well, then how do you keep coming up with a new bike? That that always gets me. But uh, you, you you still can get one. You know, I just, I think it's funny. I think it's just a, uh, I want to say a Ponzi scheme almost. Like, hurry up and buy this because you don't know how long it'll be around. And because the supply chain so short, there might not be any e-bikes left. Oh, really? So how is this new model out? Anyway, I digress. So, I, I like my e-bike. I love my e-bike. I don't have any problems with my e-bike. Every time I put the battery in, power it up. Let it do its little boot thing. Get on it. Ride it. I have fun every time. Every time. And every time I go to work, 
I have a nice little workout. Every time I go home, I have a workout, stretch my legs out. It, it, it's helped me out. It's helped me out with my with losing weight. I lost about 10 pounds and I gained about five when we had this weather that warmed up and then got cold. I'm not going to ride on ice. But that, that's about the only thing I won't ride on is ice. I ride in anything else. I won't ride in a pump. But anyway, but I still like a car because there you get yourself Either you can get yourself a really nice car and then get yourself a really nice beater like I did. And then you can you can drive the beater when you can't uh, when you can't ride the bike like I just told you guys with the ice. So you can drive the beater to work and around and then you can leave your nice car in the garage. And then in the summertime on the weekends, if you want to go on a nice long trip. Heck. You can take the nice car and even the e-bike and go on a nice trip and then go, you know, to a nice trails and stuff and enjoy it and have a picnic with your family. So, I mean, I think the two can coexist. I think they are. They're projecting that the, that, that they've already said that e-bikes have already oversold uh, electric cars, and I think they say in the next few years they're going to go 240 percent over electric be electric cars. So I think if there was some stock in the in an e bike company, a really good one, you can't get into Bosch because Bosch is privately owned. So don't look at that. Don't don't take any uh, any financial advice from me. All I would say is you can still always have your, you can have an e-bike and you can have a car and you can put a car, a nice car away and get yourself a junker. Now, I got my, my, my winter car before all this craziness happened, but there's, there's a pro. Even though these e-bikes have gone up, they have not gone up to the, the stat of what cars have gone up. And I'm sure the car prices will go down maybe in a year or two. But right there, that's if you live in a city, boom, right there. There is your there is your uh that is your reason to get an e bike over a car. And with that I'm ending this video and thank you so much for watching. Give me a like and a thumbs up. Bye.